Okay guys, so Advanced SEMA 2.9 has just been released and with it comes a major improvement and enhancement to the Advanced CSS feature, uh, which is to include SAS compilation and including partial. So I've created a, a demo here. So I've got my settings here, which is a partial. Partial is always denoted by this little dash. I've actually told it it's a partial here and AT will automatically include those partials with any other SAS before it compiles it. So what I've ended up doing is creating a basic framework in AT uh, in, in the advanced CSS. I'm going to show you how cool this is. Uh, now there are still some quirks to it. It is a brand new feature and Maxim is working hard to improve it. Uh, it does use a JavaScript SAS compiler called SASJS, and it does have some quirks, uh, which are a little bit different to what you'd expect from, say, WP Codebox, with, uh, which uses the uh, SCSS PHP or Dart SAS from Node. Um, there are a couple of little quirks in there that you will be need to be aware of, but we're not going to go into that. Today. I'm just going to show you what it can actually do. So I've created a framework here where I've got some settings with some variables. I've got some mixins and functions. I've got some globals, which are going to output some variables. I've got some overrides to set my defaults on some things. Utility classes for buttons, things like that. That is pretty much my framework in advanced schema. Okay, and with this, um, I can create a style guide. So if I have a look at the style guide here, I've got, what have I got? Spacing, I've got colors, uh, I've got topography, uh, I've got, you know, this variation of my topography. Uh, I've got font weights, uh, what have we got here? We've got buttons, uh, we've got some marks, so we've got some primary marks to change the color, and we've got a reverse mark to uh, use the primary in the background in this case. Um, we've got some box shadows, some standard black box shadows. I've got some um, colored box shadows. So these box shadows use a darkened version of the color behind it. So they blend in a little bit better than just using black. We've got spacing, we've got gaps, and we've got radius. All of that is done in that AT framework. And if we look at the CSS generated, these are these AT ones here. So here's my, that's it. That's all the variables that I have. Okay, so I've got some basic stuff where I've got some content, some spacing, radius, gaps, grids, uh, topography, and some box shadows. And that's pretty much all I need to create a uh, framework like this. Okay, uh, we're then going to look at the next one, which is the overrides. Very simple. Okay, not much to that either. We then have the utility classes, which is the bulk of it, which is our buttons. It's sort of styling of our buttons, uh, our markers, all that sort of stuff. Uh, we've got some line clamps in there as well that we can use. So, so um, these are all created from that SAS in here. Okay. Now, what's cool about this is that you don't need anything else. All we need is Bricks Builder and Advanced Schema, and we can have our framework built in there. Uh, and the next thing that I think is really, really cool about this is it's all exportable and portable. So I'm going to show you actually, I'm going to actually run up a, uh, a brand new Bricks uh, based WordPress website. And I'm going to show you how cool this actually is. Uh, now, before we do, I'm just going to explain a little bit about this framework. So the framework is all managed by the colors. They're all managed by the AT Color Manager. The framework is all managed by the Advanced CSS SAS. And then in the theme styles, we're using those variables. So for example, here in our site background, we're using AT Neutral. I am prefixing all of the AT generated variables with AT. So I know anything starting with dash dash AT is generated by AT. I'm generating all of my framework variables using uh, FW. So anything starting with dash dash FW is coming with, from the framework. The reason I do that is so that we don't have to then prefix on the site. So anything we create, any utility classes or variables we create for a particular site, we don't have to worry about prefixing. So we then go, if it's not prefixed, 
it's pulled aside. If it's got an FW, it's come from the framework. If it's got AT, it's come from advanced Athena. So it's just a really easy way to know where these things are actually coming from. Uh, so in here, my body, I've got my font size set to a variable. I've got my color set to the text color. Uh, I've got my headings. All I'm doing in that one is setting my uh, line height. Uh, and in my actual heading one, I'm telling it to use the FWH1 color and the FWH1 size. Right? You can change settings there. You can set your topography fonts, all that sort of stuff. The reason I do this is that when we want to manage the framework, uh, the sizes, colors, all that sort of stuff, we shouldn't have to touch any of this theme settings here in Bricks. We just update the variables in the framework, and then this the, the actual theme settings should update as well. So our section, we basically set that to be a maximum width of 2,500 uh, because I don't want the things to blow out on large screens. Uh, and then we set in some uh, from our framework, variables for our block padding and our inline padding here for our section. I'm rushing through this because this isn't about the framework, it's about what we can do with it. Uh, container, again, we're setting that to a content width variable. We do that so that when we set that variable in our framework, it's used in the calculations in the framework, but we don't have to come back to the theme and update it. We just keep it in one place and that's it. All right, so that is pretty much the settings there. Now. Here is the super cool part of this, right? If we then go to our uh, advanced schema and we export, go to our theme settings, and we're going to export everything from this to a JSON file. Okay, I've already done it before. I'm just going to save it over the top of the other one. So basically, we're telling it we want all of our AT colors, our AT SAS that we've created in, in the advanced CSS, uh, our theme settings in bricks. We want all of that. Anything that is relevant to the site. The only thing we can't do is our brick settings in here, um, but that's okay. We, we're not going to change much of that anyway. So now we've got a file that we can use on a fresh site. So let's go into local. We're going to spin up a new site. I'm going to do this in real time so you can see how quick this actually is. So I'm going to do AT SAS demo. And we're going to make it to admin. And leave everything else as default. And this is going to go off and provision the uh, local service. Well, this is local by Flywheel. Uh, so this is just what I use because it's easy. Uh, but um, use whatever you like. Um, all I want to have here is a uh, vanilla install of WordPress so that we can show you how cool this is. Adding WordPress, so it'll be downloading WordPress uh, current version and installing that. And all I'm going to do here is once this is up, I'm going to install Bricks. I'm going to install Advanced Seema. I'm going to import that JSON file. Uh, I'm going to connect it to a, a library that I've uh, created for this so that I can get that style guide. Uh, and then we're just going to take it from there. Last time I did this, I did see when I imported the style guide, there was a bug with Bricks. So I had to delete it and then just re-import it. Uh, but that's okay. All right, so open up our WP Admin. And at login. I'm going to get warnings from things because I'm not using SSL. So as you can see, absolute vanilla Bricks installation. There's nothing, sorry, not Bricks, uh, WordPress installation. So we're going to install Bricks. Activate that. Activate our license. Let's get that from another screen so I don't have to obfuscate this. Okay, let's just dismiss that. Don't worry about it. 
So only thing I'm going to enable in Bricks is the code execution for administrator. I normally make a lot of changes here, but I'm just showing this as a demo. And that's because our style guide has some JavaScript that needs to run uh, for updating my font sizes, etc., and color values. So that's it. That's Bricks installed, activated with code execution. Uh, we're then going to go to our plugins and install Advanced Schema. Again, I'm going to grab the license for that from another screen. <clears throat> All right, grab the license here, activate that. Okay, there we go. So all we have is bricks and advanced schema. Now, if I go to Bricks uh, Advanced SEMA settings, go to the import export. In this case, I want to import everything. Override existing settings. This is a brand new site, so it doesn't really matter. Choose our file. Here's my theme settings there. Import the settings. Reload. And now I have all of my AT settings in there that I had on my other side. I also have my SAS framework. I have everything ready to go. There are a couple of little things we need to do, yes. Uh, so I'm gonna go into my Bricks settings. There's one last thing I forgot that I've got to put in here. Uh, so I wanna pull my um, style guide from a library that I'll put up there, so. Grab my URL and password. And again, I'm not doing a demo on how to do all this. I'm just showing you what's possible. Uh, and I've still got to do a lot of work on this before I actually start implementing this on sites as well. So there we go. So I've got a template library from one of my subdomains in there that's using some uh, components that are created for this SAS framework. And I'm going to go to pages, add a new page. Whoops. Uh, add a new page. We're going to call this style guide. And publish that. Hit it with bricks. I'm going to see something funky here that is one of the things that um, we need to look at with AT. Okay, so I've got an empty editor. I'm going to go to my templates. I can see my WP Easy templates there. Here's my content. I'm just going to grab my style guide and insert that. And what we'll see is very broken. Okay, so I've got my colors there. So if I go into my, again, remember this is a brand new site. If I go into AT Color Manager, I've got a primary, secondary, neutral, black and white. This has got, the primary's got, and secondary got variations for light, six light, six dark, six transparency, same as the, as the uh, secondary, same as the neutral. Black and white has just got six transparencies. And that all came from that JSON file that we imported. The theme looks broken, doesn't it? Okay, so what we have to do is go into AT. This is one of the quirks here. If I just hit save and close, it doesn't do anything, right? But if I go into AT, go into my advanced CSS, go into my globals here, just add something like space. So I'm going to edit each of these. Oh, that was utilities. Go into overrides, just add a space. Sorry, things are going slow for some reason. In my globals, just add a space. Okay, did I do that in the utilities? I'm not sure if it did because it was going running slow. Okay, you've got to do something in each of these files here, otherwise it won't render. So if I hit save and close now, now I've got my framework. It's rendered, right? Save, go to the front end, see if it does the same things as last time, Timmy. No, nope. last time I did this, I ended up with all these extra buttons down here, which was a duplicate. There's my framework, right? So I've just gone from this site to a brand new website, um, imported the JSON file, imported my 
library year and I'm up and running. All right, how cool is that? Okay, so now I've got a framework working in AT, working in Brex, uh, and I can transport it from one site to another with all the settings all pre-done, ready to go. So I love where this is heading. Um, I am looking forward to a few improvements um, that I'm talking to Maxime about, but mate, what a great start. This is, this is brilliant. Thanks for all your hard work, Maxime. And uh, guys, if you like this kind of thing, uh, hit, the, hit the subscribe, hit the like. If you want me to go into more about the framework, uh, we can do that. But uh, at the moment, it's a bit of a work in progress. Okay, thanks for listening, guys.